Welcome back to On The Beat, everyone. I wanted to get to a lot of the questions that you wanted to ask our panel of legal whiz guns here at the station. Let me introduce you to Richard Schwartz, the founder of Richard Schwartz & Associates, and also Patrick Rudin, Chief Operating Officer and Managing Partner. How are you, my friends? Doing great. Welcome great. back to you. the show. Thanks. Alrighty, a lot of people wanted to know the laws in regarding to accidents but have been af too afraid to ask. So you ready? Absolutely. I'm going to put you in the hot seat. Deer or livestock related accidents, where are we at? There are a lot of deer yeah. in the state of Mississippi. Don't um, read me. That's exactly right. <laughs> so we are actually 12th worst in the country for car versus deer accidents. We have the 12th most of any state in the nation. What's the first thing you need to do? First thing you need to do is stop your car, um, call 911. Um, Police is, first. Is absolutely. First and foremost, um, you don't need to try to move the animal. People actually try to do that. They try to help the deer and they want to get out and move it. You let the law enforcement personnel, they are trained to do that. So you Why let would I need a lawyer if I'm having an accident with a deer? I've got no one to sue. That's right. A deer is uninsured. They yeah. unfortunately don't carry <laughs> insurance. <laughs> don't carry insurance, but your comprehensive coverage will cover oh. you. Your, so your comprehensive will. But you could have a passenger. So the passenger could say you as the driver did something wrong, potentially. Oh my gosh. So that's why you ultimately need to get a lawyer to involve to make sure your legal rights are being protected. I never think of those darn passengers. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's right. It, oh, it changes the dynamics for okay, the passenger. Pedestrians, it always scares me because oh, yeah. I'm a dreadful yeah. driver. <laughs> Don't ever get in the car with me yeah. because I often think to myself, I'm going to hit someone on the road one day. You know, where do we stand if it's our fault or... There's two different rules. Well, the generally, you have to yield to pedestrians. It's just yes. a general rule of law. And in Mississippi, we have something called comparative negligence. So what that means is a passenger or a driver could be partially at fault, and a pedestrian could be partially at fault. And that is a balancing act. That means if the driver is 80% at fault, then they only have to pay 80% of the claim. So there, the standard is what a reasonable person as a pedestrian would do under the same circumstances. All right, all right. Now, something I find really interesting, and these court cases go on forever, dog bites. Yeah. Where do we start if my next door neighbor has a dog and it bites me, but I'm on their land? That's right. And on Mississippi law, there, there's, it, it's different in every state, but in Mississippi law, you get what's usually called the first bite rule. Mm -hmm. That means your dog can bite one person first and more, that puts you officially on notice that your dog bites. Once you have that notice, you then have a duty to protect anyone else from a possible dog bite. But Some exceptions may be breed, as you have a vicious breed. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and they, they, they had that conversation about pit bulls all the yeah. time. What happens if I'm going into my neighbor's yard to, you know, have, have a drink with and I get bitten by their dog twice on their land or vice versa? They come onto my property. Well, if the owner knew the dog has bitten or was aggressive, then they had a duty to protect you. You were an invitee on their property. Okay. They have an absolute duty to protect right. you from getting bit. If they have to put up a sign? They have to do more than that. Okay. The dog would probably have to be put up. Oh, wow. In some, some way to protect you. All right. Interesting here. Question about statute of limitations here in the state of Mississippi. There are. Statute of limitations are the time frames in which you can file a lawsuit. Okay. Traditionally, a personal injury case is three years. Um, right. If you're an adult, Mississippi is one of the handful of states that you're not considered an adult to age 21. So as a minor, if you're 18 or 17 or 15, it's actually three years from the date of your 21st birthday. Um, when you start getting involved with state entities, county entities, or city entities, it's a one-year statute with very special notice requirements that come into play. So you have to consult a lawyer to make yeah. sure your legal rights are protected. Listen, I'm just telling you all out there that if you need great advice, advice is all it takes for you to be able to take that next step. Let's put up all the information. There it all is up on the screen for you. Give these gentlemen a call. They're going to steer you on the right path. Richard Schwartz and Associates, they're the people to call. Back after this short break.